Namaste, yogis. A super warm welcome to you to your Maya Align practice today. Today we'll be working with our peak posture of Vasistasana. Now, Vasistasana is named after um, many famous sages in the um, yogic tradition and texts. And the sages that have been fortunate enough to be given this name, Vasista, from Vasistasana. And the asana, of course, is always posture at the end, seat or posture. Vasista is um, or translates from Sanskrit to English as um, most excellent uh, it's they are typically the the richest most um, they are the best the best um, at what they do who they are they are the sages they are the the rishis and so with vasista the um, the history essentially um, the meaning behind this. I want to read you a little quote that's um, quite well known in yogi. And once you hear this, it begins to unravel and all make sense with our um, theming, with our dharma with this week from our tapas and working with that, that fire and that passion and knowing that too little or too much and both ends of those spectrum are not a good thing. It's working to find that balance. And so the quote I want to read you is just a, um, it's like a little story if you like. And it's about one of the yogis sitting on the, on a river bank and one of the, um, the sages, the rishis, um, Fasi star comes along up the river and the yogi is sitting beside the river and he's um, attempting to play a, an instrument. And with our yoga practice, our instrument is our body. And so symbolically um, speaking, we're speaking about the instrument of the body and the tapas within us and the fire and how much fire is beneficial and how much is the best and um, excellent, the richest form, the, um, that beautiful balanced form. And so the saying goes with the um, sage, the rishi to the, um, the yogi, if you tighten the string too much, it will snap. And if you loosen it too much, it will not play. You need to find the in-between. And so whether that instrument is a um, literal instrument or whether it is a figurative instrument and is the body, looking at our tapas and looking at the fire that is within our, um, our bellies and our cores, if we're tightening and compressing and contracting too much and um, adding too much fuel to that fire, if we're dousing the fire with fuel or with um, excessive um, wood, then it will snap, it will go out, it'll be gone. Too much contraction is no good. Too loose and not enough fuel and just a small amount of kindling and the fire will burn out. It will not play. The fire will not play and our instrument of our bodies will not play if they are too loose or too strong. We're looking to find that in between. And so with our tapas tonight, we're playing with that in between. Not too much, not too little, just right. Goldilocks. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. So to assist us to find that Goldilocks position tonight, we're using our bolster. If you don't have a bolster, grab yourself, press pause and grab yourself a couple of pillows, nice big thick pillows if you can. Um, even those U-shaped pillows are really nice here or a couple of cushions. We're going to begin with a side body release in our midpoint, our in-between point, the Goldilocks point. And so taking the bolster and running it across the mat, you're going to be taking a seat and finding deer. And with our deer posture, you look to align the um, 
one of your shins with the side of the mat and the other shin so we'll work with the left shin to the back of the mat and the right shin to the side of the mat and you want the bolster to just be snuggled up in against that right hip so from this position, we're simply going to slowly take a walk, right fingertips down onto the mat, left fingertips onto the bolster, and then slowly progress and drape yourself down over the bolster, initially coming down onto that right elbow and settle in for a moment here as this might be enough. Otherwise, we'll take it a little further and we'll extend that right arm and draw the body to slowly release into a gentle side body stretch, releasing over the bolster and using the bolster as a tool to find a contraction on tight side, too hot, a cold side, a loose side for that string, that instrument of yours. And in the center here will be just right. Now you can extend that right arm overhead as well if that feels okay. A little increase or intensify the stretch a little. You can also draw that left leg in just a little and that'll take you just a touch further too. We'll hang here in the side body for a few rounds of breath. And if it's too much with that arm extended overhead, you can keep a support with the left fingertips tented onto the bolster or onto the mat for a little bit of support. Either way, our focus other than this Goldilocks state is a squaring off of the shoulders and a squaring off of the hips. And as you inhale, I'd like you to send your inhale to that side body, assisting in that expansion between the ribs and the expansion between the ribs and the pelvis. As you exhale, I'm practicing a surrender into the bolster, noticing whether you're fighting away and pulling away from the bolster or whether you're able to release in. Let's hang here for one more breath. And then slowly find your way back. That may not feel like much while you're in the posture, but as you slowly unravel and find your way back to a seat, you'll hopefully notice a difference and a different sensation in that side that's been contracted and the side that's been taken through a deep release and let's switch sides left shin to run parallel with the side of the mat now and the bolster hugging into the left hip and right shin running in parallel with the top of the mat and let's slowly now release over that bolster, releasing right side, dropping to the forearm. Right fingertips to tent to assist you to find that full extension as you collapse and release into that right body stretch. Again, primary focus being on having the shoulders squared off and in alignment and the hips squared off and in alignment. And as you find that alignment within that alignment, we're looking for Goldilocks here too. One side contracted, one side tight, the hot side. And one side in that complete release, your nice cool side as you surrender. And that balance between the contraction and the relaxation. Maybe assisting with that arm extended overhead to find that extra space. We come back to our breath, inhaling through the nose, sending the breath to assist on that expansion through that entire right side body. And as you relax and release the breath, you surrender over the bolster, surrendering into that beautiful side body stretch. Here for a few more breaths. That Goldilocks state that we're 
looking to find tonight with the balance. It's so symbolic, not just in our postures, without giving too much fire or being too cold, finding that point, that place in the middle where it's just right. There's such an analogy for so many things in our life, finding that midway point, that beautiful balance. Let's slowly unravel and draw to rise. Releasing from the bolster, taking your time to come back to center. Let's bring the legs to cross in a Sukhasana now and release the bolster. We'll come back to that a little later. For now, just sending that off to the side of the mat and taking that release through Sukhasana, releasing the cross of the legs, I should say, for your Sukhasana. And we'll take that side body stretch just a little more deeply now. Again, we'll come to this right side first and extending the fingers. We're going to take a little walk and we'll take this out. You're already, you'll already be reasonably loose through that left side. And taking the left arm overhead as you reach to the sky and find length, we're going to slowly sink down, maybe all the way down to the elbow of that right arm. And then find... That left hand slowly surrendering over your head to deepen that side body stretch. And once you find your point, your place to settle, I need to hang the head and release that too. With the shoulders squared off and the hips squared off once more. This is all framing the foundations and preparing our body for our peak posture tonight. Let's take a gentle roll of this left shoulder, folding forwards and finding that left hand to touch the mat or the earth. And we'll take a little walk across through to that midline. Inhale back off and find a little bit of space. And then exhale, surrender down here. And as you fold forwards in that surrendered Sukhasana, I want you to close down the eyes and just notice in that position whether you can feel into and attune your drishti, your internal focus and your gaze to that imbalance between the left and the right. Can you feel the contraction, the heat through one side and that cooling sensation through the other? One side of that string of your spine should feel like it's just a little too tight and one side just a little too loose. Let's find an even space now as you slowly walk back up and find the spine long. Let's take it to the other side. Left hand to the side of the mat, take your walk. Right hand extends out. Find that crescent shape as you reach to the sky first and then slowly drop maybe all the way down into that left elbow, that left arm, or you can stay high into that hand if you prefer. That crescent shape now as you extend that right hand overhead and initially we'll gaze under that armpit to the sky to ensure that we've got the shoulders stacked in an alignment. And then once you've reached your max point, hanging the head, releasing the tension from the neck. So it too becomes a part of the stretch, a part of the Goldilocks state with one side contracted, one side in a release, a stretch, a relaxed state. And your spine maintaining that midpoint, that midline, hanging in the balance and feeling just right. Inhaling to that right side body, feel the stretch, the release and the expansion between the ribs and into the side body. Exhale and soften. Let's slowly fold forwards. Take your time here. It's a deep release. Right hand meets the mat and take a walk and find center. Hands shoulder width apart, inhale, rise. Exhale, sink down, maybe resting on the elbows and again, hang the head. 
And as you hang here for a couple of breaths, now feeling into that new balance between the left side and the right side and coming back to remember the sensation you felt earlier and the difference between those sides and now feel that connection between the two and feeling into that beautiful balance. And so good. And Yogi slowly drawing up out of the elbows and take a walk back to that midline of the spine. And let's connect to our breath as you take from your Sukhasana the hands to run the lengths of your legs, wrapping the fingertips around the knees. Gentle seated cat cow today as you inhale and open through the chest, maybe taking the eyes to close down but the internal gaze to the sky. As you exhale, rounding out through the spine, drawing chin into chest. <sighs> inhale, draw to rise. And feeling that arching, that flexion and extension through the spine now. As you continue with your breath, with your inhale to open through the front body and contract through the back body. Your exhale contracting through the front body and releasing through the back body. Flowing with your breath to inhale and finding an even release of the breath with the exhale. As you flow through your inhale and exhale, I want you to notice that balance between not just the inhale and the exhale, but that balance between the fiery side and the cool side. And imagining your spine to be that string. And one side of the string, noting if you were to draw it any more tightly, it may snap if you were to release any more and completely surrender. It would be at that point, that state where it would not play. Your spine, that midpoint now as you release, whether it's through side bodies or front body and back body. Either way, we're trying to find that midline and that center, your center. We're playing in that center point tonight, the Goldilocks point. Let's take one final round, Jokies, inhaling together. Exhaling, release. Next inhale draws you to an even spine and we'll take a roll over the knees and find the big toes together to touch. And taking a walk in your balasana, your child's pose with the knees out nice and wide. Maybe finding yourself with the belly draped, the chest draped all the way down for the chest to touch the mat, maybe the chin to touch the mat. And as you release into this surrender and your balasana, we dance that midline, that middle point. And finding our center. And let's slowly take a walk and draw the knees together. And we'll take table pop top position. Table pop position. <laughs> Hands beneath the shoulders and fingertips spread nice and wide. And we're going to take a tuck of the toes and slowly release the knees from the mat and find a plank. Inhaling here. And stay for the exhale. Next inhale, we'll draw to a down dog, hips to the sky. And stay here for the exhale. Now playing with each of our postures today and slowly progressing us to our Vasistasana. Each of our postures have these polarities. So our down dog, if you imagine this one, the hot point with the hips to the sky and the fire burning brightly as we inhale and we ripple through center and we find our plank pose this is our midline point that point of balance this is our goldilocks point as we release our hips and find our up dog surrendering the pelvis and opening through the front body now the back body in that contracted state we're dousing the fire and finding that cool release for the front body. 
drawing it back and find that midpoint for a moment and press into the hands and the toes draw the hips to the sky and take it into your down dog your down dog draws you to plank stay for the inhale your goldilocks point takes you through to your up dog flowing here through two more rounds inhale and plank pose exhale your down dog inhale exhale release up dog once more through inhale draw to plank hips to the sky exhale down dog sinking into the heels maybe and drawing the chest back the belly back towards the thigh inhale your plank exhale your up dog let's drop the knees to meet the mat and come back to our tabletop and we'll draw it down now and release the wrists and come onto the elbows taking a roll of the wrists we'll roll them in an internal direction and then external too and taking both ranges taking the wrists through both ranges and maybe alternating and noting if there's one rotation that's a little tighter one side that's a little tighter one direction that's a little tighter and then settle into stillness so beautiful and planting the hands we'll take a walk and we'll draw you back to your hero pose for a moment now that goldilocks point with our front body just as we did with our and progressions through our plank from our down dog and our up dog we're going to be taking now from side body so we'll draw our body back into that deer pose that we found earlier and that left shin aligning with the back of the mat and the right shin aligning with the side of the mat just as we did when we had our bolster here before we're going to draw down to the elbow now but this time as we find our way from our deer we're going to progress through our side planks with a similar sort of format to that hot point and that cold point and that goldilocks point in the middle but for the side body so from our deer setting you up in that right alignment between the hip and the shoulder and that elbow should be directly beneath the shoulder here you can draw the palm down and spread the fingertips for a bit of extra support or stay up on the outer blade of the hand or even make a fist whatever's comfortable for you and this left hand tending to assist you we're going to be extending the left leg and then pressing into the left hand the inside blade of that left foot and into the shin and then releasing the left hand and taking it into an assisted side plank and slowly drop back down to the hip and draw back to your deer pressing into the hand and we'll take a release overhead and draw to rise coming back down to that elbow and this time you're going to align both shins with the back of the mat with both shins aligned and the feet in a flexed state so that you're able to press in the inner arches and the inner blades of the feet towards each other once again using that left hand to tent we're drawing up into our side plank once more a little bit more intense this time and taking the left fingertips to the sky now when we work with our side planks there's that midpoint as well so if we're hanging in the hips we're going to be loading a lot in the shoulder and you'll get that real burning sensation through the shoulder when you know you're too high or too low and it should feel quite comfortable in the position where it's just right if the hips are too high and you have 
thrown the balance, then once again, burning in the shoulder as the shoulder lurches, playing around with those positions and finding that point, that midway point that's just right between the two with the body aligned. And we'll hold here for one more breath. Let's release that shoulder now and roll over onto the belly and release that right arm beneath you. Extending the left. Maybe draw the chin or the forehead to the mat. And when we work with these strong postures, there's no need to rush through there's no need to stoke the fire with excess pace and you'll find the postures will be fiery enough and let's draw back to that elbow and slowly transition back to our deer pose one more release this time a eh? opposing side left hand to plant and then the right hand overhead beautiful Let's swing it to the other side and taking deer to the opposing side. So now that right shin draws towards that parallel point at the front of the mat and your left shin aligning with the side of the mat. Left hand down to plant and we'll take a reach first of all overhead to set us up. Beautiful. And slowly finding a walk down onto that elbow. And resting on the forearm, hand to plant, fist or side blade, your call. Right fingertips to assist you as you draw in to rise. And from here, we're extending out with our stage one rise on the inner blade of the right leg. And pressing in and using that shin to assist you here. And maybe taking the right hand to the sky. And we'll stay for a couple of breaths. And drawing some warmth and some fire into this midpoint. And your midsection. And slowly guide it back down. Beautiful. And drawing in to find that parallel point with both shins now to the back of the mat. And pressing into. In the forearm, we're going to draw to rise using those right fingertips to assist and then taking them to the sky and finding that sinking position and the hips nice and high and then playing with those two to find that midpoint. Staying with your breath. Beautiful. And slowly draw it down. Rolling over the front now and feeding onto the front body and feeding that left arm through. And beautiful release here for the back of that left shoulder. Let's bring it back in and draw to rise. And coming back to that deer pose. And then this time planting the right fingertips down. And taking an extension overhead, releasing through side body. And if you feel the need, take it to the other side as well. Beautiful. So good, yogis. Back to and that's Sukhasana. And what we're going to be doing now is taking this into a full extension. I'm going to give you some new variations and versions where you can stay with where you've um, just worked with. At each point, we can progress or regress. And I want you to really tune in and listen to what's just right for you. Acknowledging that with this Goldilocks point, what's too hot for you may be just right for someone else. What's just right for you 
may be too cold for somebody else. And so it's learning and listening to your instrument and knowing what that Goldilocks point is for you. Okay. Let's take a roll over these knees and shins and find ourselves back at on that wide-legged balasana. I'm folding down and finding your child's pose for a moment. And then let's inhale and draw to rise. Back to where we began with this tabletop position. The knees beneath the hips, the hands beneath the shoulders. Tucking the toes and finding that plank pose. Our Goldilocks point here for the front body. Inhale. Hips to the sky on the exhale, down dog. Ripple through center, inhale. We're going to go through that Goldilocks point now and find our up dog. And through our Goldilocks point and find our down dog. Exhale. And as you feel through this flow, we'll take it two more times. We need to feel the pressure and the tension that's involved through each point from one end to the other and see if you can really pinpoint that Goldilocks point for you. One more time from down dog, rippling through center, your plank pose and progress through to your up dog. And let's find our way back to that down dog. Beautiful. And from here, we'll drop to the knees tabletop position. Taking the right forearm down and the left fingertips to tent, going to release into the toes, the balls of the feet and find that plank pose and then take a roll out so that you're on the inner arch of the left foot and the outer arch of the right. Slowly releasing if you feel ready now the left fingertips to the sky and playing with that point where we find a bit of an arch and a release here, just like our down dog and our up dog, and then sinking the hips back to find a release and a rest. I'm gonna take this two more times, and you can come back to press into the ground to help you rise. The hardest part is getting out from the base. We're pressing in and finding that midpoint. Gazing to the sky down at the hand or straight in front, your core, whatever's comfortable for you hips high and this time taking the hand overhead and feeling that beautiful release through the left side hips back down hand back down one more time and then you get a shoulder release don't worry let's find our way back midpoint inhale long spine send it overhead feel into that crescent shape hanging the head exhale sinking it all the way back down and then rolling over take a release of this right arm three breaths here i'm feeling into that fire in that right shoulder one more breath Beautiful. I'm drawing back up, hands beneath the shoulders, beside the rib cage, pressing into the hands and coming back to that tabletop position. You're going to be taking it to the other side. And from here, drawing down to rest on that left forearm and finding in the hand, in the fist, or that outer blade, just as you did in your earlier postures, whatever suits you. And from here, we're going to tuck the toes and find that plank pose. Rolling over now to the outer blade of the left foot and the inner arch of the right. And finding our side plank, extending right fingertips to the sky. Inhale, find your midline point. And then take the hips nice and high, reaching a little higher to the sky. And then we'll slowly sink it down to draw to rest. Resetting if you need and making sure you've got that alignment for that left elbow directly underneath that left shoulder. And pressing into the mat or drawing to rise. We've got two more times here. Inhale, lifting the hips. 
and take a little higher hand overhead find that crescent shape long line through right side body as you exhale slowly work through that midpoint sinking all the way back down finding fluidity inhale rise through goldilocks point and find your crescent hand overhead to reach long line right side body exhale through goldilocks sinking all the way down and roll over now into the belly and get take that release for the left shoulder and threading the needle left side I'm doing so well one more breath And slide it on back. And let's take it back through tabletop position all the way back to hero. Now we took a release before for the wrists and we've been working with the shoulders, releasing through the back of the shoulders. We need to take your hands to the back body and we'll just take a little release through the front of the shoulders using gravity to assist us here. We're going to fold forwards in that humble bow we've been working with this week and maybe even take the forehead to the mat as you draw the hands overhead. When you take this release, it's nice rather than sinking in and lurching with the shoulders to take the fists to the sky. And as you draw them actively towards the sky, you'll notice it'll help open through the front of the chest and open through the front of the shoulders too. Let's release the grip. And slowly find your way back through your hero. Now the tapas that we've been working with this week has been slowly building our core strength and we've been working with a lot of uh, these upper body holds and postures and strong, strong postures. Our Vasi Stasana, we've got two variations we're working with tonight. And before you fatigue in the shoulders too much, we're going to jump straight into them. You've done quite a bit of warm prep work, although the pace is not there. Your shoulders should be feeling nice and warm. And so coming back to that tabletop position, hands beneath the shoulders, we're going to be tucking the toes and finding that plank pose midline point. Inhale, find that now. Exhale, take your hips to the sky for your down dog. As your exhale releases from the nose, your heels sink down, your belly sinks back towards the thighs. We're going to inhale here and we'll lead with the left leg. We're going to take that left leg to the sky and find three leg dog and then open the hip into a beautiful scorpion. Now from your scorpion, if you've been working with our postures this week, you will have, will have already had a little play with this one. Your left foot is falling back behind you to meet the mat. Now we're not going into a wild thing here where we're opening through the front body. We're staying with this side plank. So we're in, ex in an extended version of what we've been working with, but up on the hand now. So you should feel a little lighter now. Left hand extended, right wrist is taking a lot of the load though. So we'll hold here just for one more breath. Inhale and again, watch that the hips are not dropping too high, too low, finding that Goldilocks point and finding that spot that's just right for you. And so beautiful. Left hand to release to the mat and take it back to the plank pose. Drop the knees. Sink back into your balasana. Forehead meets the mat. And tabletop pose. And tucking the toes and finding that plank pose. Take an inhale here. Hips to the sky. Exhale, down dog. And planting those left toes, right toes to the sky this time. And open it up into your scorpion. Hanging that heel, allow the knee to lead as you take a beautiful big release through the hip. Right foot now finding its way back to the mat in that halfway point. As you embed the left hand and align it 
underneath, directly underneath the shoulder, squaring off shoulders and hips and taking the right fingertips to the sky. Watching that the hips are not sinking too low or you're not in that crescent and you've played through both ends of that spe spectrum. So we should be getting a good feel and a good sense of where that midline is. So one more breath using those right toes to press into, to hold you and to support you. Right hand meets the mat, take it back, plank pose. And this time up dog, as you sink the hips, untuck the toes, gazing to the sky for your cobra now. Unravel, and belly to the mat and extending those arms. And listening to your body from here and maybe you need to release through the back of the shoulders and finding that beautiful thread the needle release we've been working with and otherwise we'll all be meeting to take our shalabhasana and our shalabhasana is a contraction of the muscles that run the length of the back body and for this one we're taking the hands to grip just as we did before in our seat behind us you're going to this time shoot the fist towards the back of the room, lifting and opening the chest and finding the shoulders rolling back, the chest opening, the shoulders opening and the back body in that nice, strong, contracted state. Exhale, release and take the backs of the hands to the mat and forehead to the mat. Hands beneath the shoulders. Let's take it on back to that balasana. And then slowly walk it back, Euro pose. So beautiful. Well done, yogis. Your two postures that we're working with our Vasi and variations today is the variation we've just played with in which from your flip, that bottom leg is the one that's holding you stable and the top leg is the support. The other variation that we're working with, the top leg will be taking the, um, the majority of the load and the bottom leg will be support. So we'll take that other variation now and then put it all together. From your hero pose, rise, tabletop pose. We're gonna be tucking the toes and finding your plank pose. You inhale, draw to rise. Your exhale takes you into that down dog, heels to sink, belly to sink back Reach. towards the thigh. Your three leg dog. Open it up and feel into that scorpion for just a moment. And then planting that left foot behind you at that midway point at a side plank, our Vasi Stasna today. And then releasing that top leg this time and taking that into a full star if you feel you've got the strength, you've got the balance, you're feeling into that vasty tonight, the greatness, the richness of this Goldilocks point. We're going to roll over, plant the left hand, drop that left knee and then roll out into your Paragasana. Your pivot happens on that left knee now. Left hand plants and your right wrist gets a little release as we open in. So now our Vasi Stasana variation on the opposing side, inner arch of the right foot as we release and maybe just tuck the toes and release the knee. Maybe you draw the toes as well, drawing the knee to the front body or also taking that full extension and that full side variation and floating Vasistasana. And as you draw this one back, let's take it back to plank pose. Inhale that midpoint. Take it into the up dog. Inhale. Untuck the toes, ripple it down. And pressing into the hands, drawing it back through tabletop and finding balasana. And so beautiful, yogis, feeling into that alignment with the strength work for the upper body. And the release and the stretch too. I'm going to take that to the other side. And final side. 
and taking whatever release and whatever counter you need for the shoulders, for the wrists, and then find your way to tabletop. From tabletop position, let's tuck the toes. Plank pose. Stay for the inhale. Hips to the sky, you're down dog. Right toes for the reach. And three leg dog, sinking into that left heel, squaring off the hip. And then open it up and feel into that scorpion. Right toes touching down at that midway point. Right hand ripple and rise, resting now on the outer blade of the left foot and maybe feeling into that full variation of your vasistas and all of the greatness, all of the richness. And so beautiful. Right hand to the mat and that right knee to that tabletop position. Rolling straight on out to your Pyragasana as you pivot on that right knee and roll to the inner arch of the left foot. Left arm extends to the sky. Releasing now the right knee. Maybe just tucking the toes and just find the knee floating. Maybe the toes float too. Maybe you draw the knee in. Or maybe you take that full variation and extension. One full breath. And take it back home. And shooting it all the way back to that plank pose. Inhale. Melt the hips rolling over the toes. Your cobra. Or your up dog. Release it down to the mat. Oh, well done yogis. Ah, release the wrists, open the palms, and rest the forehead. And let's slowly bring those elbows back in, resting on the forearms once more. And let's bring it on home and we'll release over that bolster once more, a little more surrendered state this time. Grabbing your pillows or your bolster. We're going to take that back into the midway point of the mat once more. But this time as you roll down over that bolster, we'll find our way to right side body. And we'll take the legs into that full extension as if you were going into Vasi Stasen, but don't worry. No more side planks today. Complete surrender now as you lay with the body long. And maybe take that left hand overhead again, or you can wrap it over the pillow, the bolster, or just have it there to tend and square you off. And this should feel like a really nice surrender now for the spine and for that whole midsection that's worked to hold you today, the shoulders. And so nice. Our transition now is actually going to be via the back body. As you press into the left fingertips and draw to rise just a little, you're going to take a little roll and allow your hips to still meet the mat and that pillow or the bolster will just tuck into their pelvis. I want you to open up now through the low belly as you slowly unravel the back body to the mat, the back of the head to the mat. And you might keep the soles of the feet on the mat here or take them into an extension. And cactusing the arms feels nice here or take a full extension. You can draw it back to the soles of the feet. If your hands are overhead, draw them back onto the bolster now. We're going to draw the chin into the chest and slowly rounding back up. And we'll take it to the other side. Left side to lie over the bolster, full extension, long arms, long legs. Maybe releasing both hands overhead. 
laying over the bolster or the pillow, feel into that beautiful long side body stretch through the right side. Shoulders squared off, hips squared off. And as you exhale, feel into the heaviness of your body. Allow the body to feel heavy. Right hand now pressing and tensing in to assist you to rise. And slowly walking your way back up. One final release here. And using your bolster, you're going to tuck it all the way into the back of the pelvis or your pillow. And then this time, and take a seat up on top of the bolster and we'll slowly lay our back body down to the mat walking and taking our time to fill into this release and just take the elbows to begin. And let's hang the head and open through the throat, hammocking between the shoulders. And slowly drawing chin into chest, rounding out through the back body a little more and inviting now the thoracic and the back of the head down. And with the feet shoulder width apart and the soles of the feet still pressing into the mat, allow the low back to release here and soften. And either stay here or take an extension of the arms and an extension of the legs. And you'll feel a beautiful release here now through the front of the hips, the hip flexors. And you may choose to take your savasana in here today if that feels good for the low back and for the pelvis. Otherwise, if you'd like the support of the bolster or your pillows beneath your knees, if that feels better for your low back, transition now taking the soles of the feet to the mat, lift the pelvis from the pillows and then push them down or roll that bolster down. And taking the hips to the mat and extending the legs. And wherever you are in your savasana, whether you've got that support beneath the knees or beneath the hips, close down the eyes. Three clearing breaths to drop in. Deep inhale. Open the mouth, sigh out the practice. Two more clearing breaths, yogis. Deep inhale through the nose. Open your mouth and sigh out those vasistasanas. Ah, oh, worked hard tonight. One more clearing breath, inhale. Open the mouth. Oh. Sigh out the practice, your Vasi Stasnas, and your entire day. Release conscious control of the breath. And surrender into your Savasana. And if you're at home working with this recording, feel free to hit pause and extend your savasana. And otherwise, from here. And lift the bolsters beneath your hips. And take the soles of the feet to the mat. Lift the pelvis and roll the bolster away using your hands and allow it to meet the backs of your knees. Extend your legs. And everybody now taking the bolster or the pillows from beneath the legs as you one by one roll them out away from you. 
and take a roll to your favorite side feeling into that tight ball of fetal position as your transition and with the eyes still closed down and press into the hands and slowly draw to rise coming back to your seat If you tighten the string too much, it will snap. If you loosen it too much, it will not play. And find the in-between. Now, Dharma for today's practice and now Dharma maybe for your day, for your week, for this year. Finding just the right amount of fire within you and all around you. And finding that Goldilocks state. And let's take the fingertips beside the body. Inhale and find length for your spine, drawing the crown towards the sky. And flip the palms, inhale, sweep and reach to rise. And your exhale, finding your hands and your prayer at heart center as you bow the forehead. And bowing inwards in a sign of gratitude and respect. So the teacher that resides within. And the inhale long spine. Yogis, thank you so much for sharing this fiery tapas that resides within you. Thank you for channeling that passion into your Vasi Stasnas today. Thank you for sharing your tapas with me this week may you go on to share it with all of those you come into contact with and remember to reserve just a little for you too thank you so much yogis thank you for joining me for my airline and thank you for joining me in each practice this week namaste <laughs>